Hello, quick video here. Uh, first of three parts uh, on the ES40 emulator. Um, you know, made the, there's been some changes to it. Uh, you know, just did a merge on the repository and uh, had a couple comments asking about it. And now with the future of the hobbyist program for VAX in question, uh, I thought it'd be a good time to revisit the ES40 emulator. That's an emulator for alpha, um, open source. So first video here, we're going to set up the environment and then build the software. Next one, we'll configure it. Final one, we'll throw VMS on it. And to get started, we're here on OmniOS. Um, we'll just create a zone for it. I'm going to create a couple of VNX first. Now, create two interfaces. Um, that way, we can use PCAP on the other one. And we'll give it a little bit of RAM. Uh, I'll give it two CPUs. Oh. Making problems already. That'll work better. Um. So, previous experience with the ES40 emulator, it's a little slow, um, but it is probably your best choice for a free alpha emulator if you want to run in a Unix-like environment. Um, there used to be a product called Alpha VM Free, or MUVM Free, that would do the uh, alpha emulation. Uh, Linux, I think they had a free BSD uh, available as well. And that was uh, that was pretty nice. It was fast. Uh, again, it wasn't full featured, and it is curious about the the lack of alpha emulation. And I'm also curious about the price of alpha gear as well. Um, pretty much everything related to VMS, you know, the former deck stuff is very expensive. Vaxes are expensive. I mean, pick up a Spark station for next to nothing, which in many ways is a lot cooler. Um, still convinced it has to do with you know governments and militaries who use them. Um, although militaries use Spark Station, so uh, I don't know. Um, quality of emulation for Spark is certainly uh, way up there, uh, and it's free um, in in Kimu. Okay, we've created uh, this. We're gonna need to add this interface in. Um, I'll add that. Give it the other interface. And we need to set the link property for uh, promiscuous filtering off. Okay, let's just check that. And uh, that is set to off. I'll start her up. I've really come to find uh, the Z-Cage utility incredibly handy. Um, it makes so much stuff so simple. Um, you know, tearing down, starting up zones, uh, reconfiguring them. Uh, as you saw, I had to go to zone config there. Um, to get there, uh, to to add the interface, but I mean, nothing to say I couldn't go add some stuff to uh, to Zcage myself. Uh, I never seemed to have time to do these things. Uh, so let's put in some uh, packages. I'm trying to remember what we need. Uh, we're gonna get Xorg um, in case we want to try the video on here. Do GCC. 
I'll build essentials, the prototypes. What else am I missing? Uh, SDL. I think that'll get us. Maybe in the third video or second one, we'll look and see if we can get a, a screen up. I haven't yet played with that, but that's why I want to get Xorg on here. Maybe we should do SDL TTF because we need fonts. Now that'll take a hot minute. Okay. Go over here and we'll pull down the repo while we're waiting there since time is of the essence. I got some rice on the stove for uh, for dinner, so we'll make sure we get things uh, wrapped up here. I'll put the link to this repo in the repository. Uh, one thing to note while we're waiting for that to install, um, it comes with a default configuration. And there's, and what, this is one of the reasons I put in SDL and X, is I want to see if really can get a, a GUI up. I've never tried that. Um, so we'll see if that, uh, that'll actually work. Um, I'm going to want to get the ROMs here, and we'll, we'll log out and copy those because this install is going to take, yeah, it's going to take a minute. Um, and what's interesting, the default um, configuration includes two CPUs, which I don't know if that actually works. Um, I've never tried configuring it, and puts the disks on the IDE bus. Whereas I've always typically put them on the SCSI bus here, or SCSI controller. So interesting stuff. Up a level here. And I think I have alpha ROMs. Nice thing about zones, you can just put stuff in them uh, from the root zone. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Um, th this is just for playing around. If I was going to do this the right way, I would have given uh, some delegation for uh, ZFS and also brought in the device match so that I could have created ZVols to use for the, uh, the disk images. Uh, right now, these are you know essentially raw images, uh, but I think the Zvols would have been nice to put in there. Uh, and maybe we'll do that later, uh, time allowing. So it is taking a hot minute for the uh, for the fonts to go in. Since I have a moment to wait, um, I'd like to just say hopefully everyone is handling this uh, global pandemic well. Um, here in the U.S. it is a bit of a thing, but, uh, you know, more excuse to sit in front of the TV, I guess. And one of the things um, I would like to, to look at, and we'll do a comparison here, uh, the compilers won't be the same. I could, I suppose, put uh, the latest compiler on there. Is the performance difference between the new machine here, which is an i7, you know, call it four and a half gigahertz, and the old AMD at four and a half gigahertz, and see how they do emulator to emulator. I, my guess is it's about, you know, one and a half times the speed. Uh, I don't know for certain, but you know, we will. Uh, We'll check it out here. So many packages. So to build this, it looks like we're we're having to install about uh, a gig and a bit of dependencies. Some of that I don't think was entirely necessary. 
Um, I don't know if the, the 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 GUI will work at all, but I figured it might be fun to try it. Uh, so we'll check it out. Let me know if there's any um, interest in doing the same process here for SimH, uh, bringing some of that stuff up in a zone and uh, mess around with that. The other thing to note is recent poll here on the channel for what to cover next. A lot of interest. The winner of the poll was uh, doing Solaris 2.6 on the Spark Station 20. Uh, I went to boot it up. I haven't turned it on in some time. And it needed a new uh, NVRAM, you know, new uh, clock chip. So I've now got one from Mauser, and I just need to put it in. So that will be coming. Uh, in fact, probably relatively soon. Uh, I just need the time to open it up and get in there. This is why I really should try to do these things before I record them. Uh, I had no idea this was going to take so long to install the dependencies. there's any order to how uh, package source does the install yeah that's a lot of stuff 291 packages pretty hefty um, but it is nice that uh, OmniOS now has this uh, package source brand makes this sort of stuff really painless uh, to get a system like this up and it looks like we are we are done well almost done it is installing Okay, we are in. Let's go over here. And this should be as simple as doing an auto reconf. Configure. Just make sure it picked up PCAP. Yep. SDL. And socket. So my my laptop, where I was playing around with this, is Open Indiana, also using Package Source there. And we should be able to do a make. Give it, uh, give it three jobs and see how quickly it goes. So a bunch of, uh, you know, syntax warnings, uh, minor ones. I probably should go and fix that. Um, it should be really, really easy to go and uh, clear all those up. Uh, you know, might help, uh, you know, mainly just because of the false positives on warnings. This would be good to see useful warnings. You can see a whole bunch of warnings scroll by and you kind of may miss something that might be useful. We are done. So we now have a, a working. So this is all because it's got uh, you know, window style path names and directories that don't exist, etc. So uh, I guess this wraps it up for this video. Leave a comment if. Uh, this is useful. You want to see more ES40? I'll still continue anyway. 
um, or if there's anything that I should have included in this one that I didn't, uh, and we'll catch it on the next one. Thanks again, as always, for watching.